The UC Irvine Center for Complex Biological Systems was formed really to help usher in this major change that's going on in biology right now. Where we're moving away from just trying to understand the mechanisms that give rise to biological phenomena, to really trying to understand what are the strategies that biological systems use in order to do this new kind of biology, which many people call systems biology, you really have to draw upon ideas and expertise from many, many different disciplines. One of the main goals of our center is to help people get together and form these teams in order to work on uh, the kinds of projects that are going to propel biology forward in the future. progress that I'm most excited about is actually with our multidisciplinary team of mathematicians and physicists. We've been able to look at how tumors metabolize sugar in living tumors in real time and try and understand how the metabolism of a tumor is similar and how it's different from the metabolism of normal stem cells in the intestine. As a mathematician, basically what we do is we translate what's known in terms of the biology into equations. Most recently, I've been focusing on epithelial uh, cancers, so carcinomas. And so these are cancers that arise from the epithelial lining that uh, lines the uh, organs of the body. Um, examples are breast, uh, prostate, uh, colon. What I've been most interested in recently is how the tumors are interacting with their microenvironment. Enrico Graton's group is running the laboratory for fluorescence dynamics and uh, they've developed a very phenomenal way to just take living tissue and shine light on it, different wavelengths of light, uh, and see things that we don't normally see in the, by the naked eye or in white light. We tag molecules with fluorescence probes and then we look at where they go, the dynamics, how they interact with other molecules in the cell, how they move, how they diffuse, uh, where they stop, where they go. We have really unique methods to see how a tumor, cell by cell, responds to external uh, modifications, how it will respond to, for example, changes in the extracellular space, how to res will respond to drugs, and in a live system. The real world application from our work, we think, is that if we can understand how cancer stem cells can be, number one, located, and number two, studied for their differences in behavior, then number three, we can target them. At the end of the day, what is so exciting about working with mathematicians and physicists and people that come from different disciplines uh, is that the demystifying of a very complex problem such as cancer uh, has uh, led to unexpected results and unexpected insights and has certainly steered me in directions that I could never have predicted and uh, I think there's no going back. I, I always will want to work on, with a team, a multidisciplinary team. The world in which we live, our environment has pattern, it has architecture. Things don't occur on, on a flat wall in front of us. Pattern formation is important to the development of sensory systems because it's absolutely essential to their function. We're interested in the patterning of the nervous system. It's kind of a process of uh, progressive subdivision of cells from a brain and a spinal cord area to different subdomains within that, like forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain, and spinal cord. Zebrafish are vertebrates, so they are like us in the sense that they have a brain and spinal cord that functions very similar to ours. The way that our work is relevant to birth defects is um, primarily because the, the molecule retinoic acid that we're working on is a known cause of birth defects. My main role is, is really is develop models, uh, develop a mathematical description, and uh, using mathematics, using modeling and a computation to simulate, to explain some of the observations and develop the theory. Usually we start with a simple model based on the experimental observation, so based on the known facts, and then we're trying to use that as a starting point to make, to make predictions. I think we are now in a state of science where we're data rich, maybe data overloaded, 
and trying to understand how to assemble all these data we've been accumulating for the past couple of decades. Um, the molecular data, the developmental data, that requires collaboration between mathematicians, biologists, engineers, optical biologists, physicists, to all people who want to understand problems at different levels. If we're going to uh, change the way biology is done, we have to train students to be able to deal with the needs of, of the discipline in the future. And so by having a program dedicated to systems biology here, we're able to train students uh, to understand the mathematics, the physics, the computer science, the statistics, and so on, that they're going to need to succeed.